Hey, good morning, guys. Travis with Preston here, and your boys at James Madison Mount Pillar again. All right. So this is my third time up here, and this time I'm bringing you something special. All right. So I'm actually doing a three and a half day historic cooking expedition, and the chef is my homeboy, is my man, uh, Jerome Bias, and um, he's well. Hey, you got to look him up. All right. I'm gonna make sure I tag him below in this video. All right. So this is like I said, three and a half days. So I'm not gonna have one big long video. I'm gonna try to break it down into at least two to three videos. So right now we're on the south line and directly behind me is the um, is Mount Pillar. You can see kind of right there. And then right here are the slave quarters and like where they used to store food and stuff like that. So if you kind of look right here, that's uh, them right now um, setting up. So it's in the wee hours of the mer uh, morning. It's about seven something in the morning. So we're gonna essentially be learning some of the foods that enslaved people used to cook for their masters and stuff like that, AKA James Madison and his family and all his um, people that used to come and visit, all right? So he got a lot of traditional dishes that we, the people are going to be preparing and moving through the house and bringing it up through the, um, the back channels and stuff like that. So it's kind of like we get a glimpse into how the enslaved used to live and actually used to cook and stuff like that. So I'm super excited. I never did anything like this before. So make sure you stay tuned. Like, subscribe, leave a comment at the very end of the video, and watch all the videos, and watch the other uh, James Madison material as well, all right? So let's go. All right, so currently right now we're um, setting up and he's giving us like a little overview of what the enslaved people had to go over and understand and know how to move and navigate um, between the, uh, the kitchen and taking it to the big house and stuff like that. So he's actually, he's top notch. So I'm gonna try to get a little closer so I can show you guys kind of some of the commentary, all right? When we, we're gonna be baking in our, in our Dutch ovens, which means we're gonna put put a bed of coals down we're gonna put our dutch oven on top of that then we're gonna put our dish in there if we put that dish straight on that on that hot metal this dish will break so we're gonna to have to get some gravels from the from one of them somewhere around here we're gonna find some gravels and we'll put that down in there and then we're gonna put our, our dishes on top of the gravels okay inside of the dutch oven then we're gonna put a lid on that and put some and put some coals on top of that and that's how we're gonna bake um, so just be mindful of that as you're using these. Quick question. Yes. When you put the, so this goes on gravel underneath, you put the stuff on the top, are you going to place coals on top of that or do you need something to shoot? Nope, we're going okay. to put the lid on that and then okay. put coals right oh, put on top. The, I got it now. Got it. So we got that. Redware is, redware is another type of dishware, you guys perhaps seen this. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a later time period. And then we have stoneware. These are, this is a one cup measurement. Thank you. Um, I'm not throwing out, the only measuring cup out here is for the, um, we use it to get the lard out. So the rest of it, you're measuring it by eye and using one of these, okay? Um, you're gonna find that this is a, you're gonna find that it's kind of interesting. They they talk about all these dishes being, red, a lot of the redware dishes, especially you have a big fat lip here. They want to call this, damn people there, those archaeologists, they want to call it a um, milk pan. Yeah, milk pan, milk pan, milk pan. And not only is this not a milk pan, but you can use it for everything. I'm gonna cook in it. You can see why I've got food stains on it. And I'm gonna use it for a pitcher. And I'm gonna use it to just store stuff in. That's the joy of the redware. And I'm out, you're also gonna find that we're gonna be baking in, in, the, in, in the yellowware. Um, we're gonna have one recipe that's gonna cause for the, um, the, queen's, the queen's, queen's cakes. Queen cakes. <laughs> See, that's what popped up. 
Is it, you need to make little cupcakes out of it? Well, I don't know how to do that. Um, it's easier if you're baking, in, in a, if you have a bake oven, but we've got baked kettles. So we got these, I picked up these at the, at the thrift store, and we're gonna see how it works. All right? Um, in our buckets, we have some, when, when they have, when they sort the water hose thing out, these are our buckets that we're gonna keep filled, and we're gonna be working from that. I need, I do not believe in a nasty ass kitchen. Excuse my French. Um, so I need y'all to keep it going, keep it cleaning. We're gonna need someone to, to be out and be washing dishes. Um, normally, we can, we can set up. A, I prefer to use lasso, but a lot of people go, "Oh my God!" So we've got Dawn dishwasher detergent. <laughs> now the cool thing about the Dawn dishwasher detergent is that it cuts the grease, whether it's cold or whether it's hot. So we, 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 we wash it with hot water, cold water, don't freeze, okay? I will show you my hot water heater. And we're gonna have a, a bucket of water over there by the fire. But here we're gonna need to cook out of that bucket. Uh, and you can go dip out of that and all that kind of good stuff. Um, we're gonna have a food soaps over there. I'm gonna need to straighten this out so we have a little bit more space. Put this over here. All right, guys, so just to give you guys a kind of like a feel of what's going on. Um, so pretty much we're going, so at 08, we started with the introduction at the South Yard. So everybody did like a little round robin of who they are and uh, what kind of food memories they have. Um, and then right after that, we did kind of like a, a kitchen of Montpelier tour. Uh, so it started with the South Yard, the cellar, and the other kitchens around the main house. So we got like a little bit of a uh, background of where we kind of at um, and located on the property. And then now we're starting to cooking, all right? So the cooking is actually broken down to three different groups, uh, cause that's how many people we have. Uh, so we have group A, which are in charge of making the lunch, okay? Uh, so today we're gonna be having Brazilian greens, chicken and pastries, all right? Uh, so we have group B, which is I'm, what I'm part of, is making the lard. And making the lard, we're gonna be doing crackling bread, okay? And then we have the final group, group C, uh, which is they're going to be making, uh, they're going to be baking Queens party cakes, yeasted coffee cakes, and um, that's when we're going to be starting the bread, okay? So I'll be kind of going through that. And I'm going to kind of show you guys um, like the lard and the group that I'm part of, and I'm trying to show you the other groups as well. All right, guys, so I'm taking a break to uh, get some of this content and trying to help out the team. But as you can see, everybody is working as a complete team. And we all just came together last night like Voltron, right? So you got people that's cutting up vegetables at this table. Uh, they're doing what they need to be doing, cutting up onions and peppers and stuff like that. And directly right here, uh, they're working on the, um, the bakery stuff. So that's like the Queen's cake and stuff that they're doing. 
Um, and then on the far end, that's the large table where I was at. And then right there, we have the open grill, the open pit uh, that they're working hard to keep the fire going. They actually just started a, a whole nother, um, I guess, fire uh, stack, if you will, um, to, to cook multiple things. So I'm trying to get a little closer so I, and not interrupt people as they do their job. But yeah, let's go. So just got done scooping some of the lard out of the vat, uh, the crock pot into the mason jars to let it uh, congeal and stuff like that. But oh my gosh, my eyes were on fire, burning. I could barely even see. Uh, so I can only imagine like, you know, on a summer day doing this for hours upon hours daily, you know, just every day of your life is definitely something um, that gives me thoughts, right? And this is what this is about, you know, creating that dialogue on um, trying to, you know, I guess, get a taste of what the enslaved people went through, uh, my people, my ancestors. Uh, so this is what this is for. This is supposed to invoke, you know, thought. And so, you know, get the juices going, have a dialogue, discussion, stuff like that. So make sure you tell me some of your thoughts as, as you watch this video. Thank you. 
All right, so directly behind me. Uh, so the culmination of this on the third day, uh, which will be Saturday, um, we'll be cooking a pig in the ground. So we'll get a little closer and see how big it needs to be, how do they know how to do it, things of that nature. All right, guys, so I just wanted to take a break in a moment and because the food's just about done. So I have Mary here from James Montpelier, James Madison Montpelier, and I want her to talk about a little bit about the program and what people can actually, you know, look forward to doing. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being out here. So my name is Mary Furlong Minkoff. I'm the assistant director of the archaeology department here, I'm also the curator of archaeological collections, which basically means I do all the archaeology besides the digging, so I manage okay. all the things. Um, but one of the parts of my job is to manage these public programs. So we have what we call our LEARN expedition programs. And that LEARN stands for Locate, Excavate, um, analyze, reconstruct, and network. Okay. So these are all programs where people can come and spend days on the property, live on the property here with us, and learn archaeology, historical research, and recreating um, the past through their experiences. So what we're doing this week is we have our first ever hearth cooking expedition. So this falls under our idea of reconstruct. Okay. So we've reconstructed buildings, including this one right behind us on reconstruction programs in the past, as well as log like cabins. But we thought, what are other experiences and things could we reconstruct? And we thought, let's reconstruct the meals and what life would have been like in the South Yard. So okay. basically people from all over the country, they sign up and they can come on these programs. They learn how to prepare the foods, prepare the meals like they would have done in the early 1800s. And they use all of the research that we've put together from archeological analysis and historical documents to figure out what those meals would have been like. But what we're able to do here is really get it sort of off the page, out okay. of the dirt, and really put the people back into it. Okay. So that experience, that heat of the fire, that co uh, <laughs> conversation as you're rolling the dough, mm -hmm. that, oh my goodness, we put pepper in when we thought it was nutmeg, we gotta remake the batter, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. So getting that real um, human experience of what a little taste of what life would have been like in the past. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been getting all through the day. Like you said, that heat from the fire is real because <laughs> I was trying to get the lard uh, out of the um, the pot and the smoke, I was like, I can't even see. And I just can only imagine um, the enslaved people going through this. I mean, especially at that time where it was hot, there's no AC, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like they're drinking water every two seconds, not like, like you know, how we've been trying to stay hydrated. So yeah, this is definitely a great experience and I'm glad you guys are actually doing this. Um, so how long have this particular program been going on? So this particular program, this is the first time. First one. This yeah. is the first one. So we've been really fortunate to have Jerome come on other programs. Um, so for example, we did a dining themed lab analysis program okay. where we analyzed artifacts um, from uh, uh, having to do with dining and food ways. Um, but we only had one meal as part of that. And then we also had a smaller tea. So this is the first time that's been completely centered around cooking and making the food. That's awesome. And so how many different programs do you guys have? So throughout we, the year too, so. Usually throughout the year, we run about 15 programs okay. a year. Um, most of our programs are week long, but we've added in a couple of these shorter ones. So this one's a three day. Um, so the majority of our programs are focused on doing archeological excavation, uh, but we have some specialty within that. So we have one specifically for high school students. We have one specifically for teachers who okay. wanna figure out how to bring that in the classroom. We usually do one lab program every year and that has a different theme. So we've done dining, we've done artifact conservation, we've done museum exhibit creation, all okay. those different themes. Um, and then we do our reconstruction program. So we've done log cabins, we've done timber frame architecture, and actually, Jerome's gonna be coming back this fall and we're gonna do some furniture construction. Wow. Um, not furniture as you would think of so much as fancy furniture inside the houses, but the kind of furniture that would have been used in this space okay, for outside. Okay. So thinking about benches and tables that would have been used for exactly the kinds of things we're doing today. So 
okay. what they would have cooked off of, what they would have sat on when they're taking their break to wow. eat, all of that kind of stuff. So sort of this outdoor furniture, because there's so much work that's going to be going on in these outdoor spaces, the cooking, the laundry, all of these kinds of things. And they require tables and yeah. benches and chairs. Okay. And I guess the big question that I would ask if I was one of the people looking at this, do you need to be an expert? You do not need to be an expert. So two things about our programs. The first thing is where you find out about them. Mm -hmm. So you go to Montpelier.org backslash dig. If you can remember the words Montpelier and dig on all the social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, you can find us and you can find a full list of our programs there. Okay. I will say that um, these programs are fee based. So what your fees pay for actually help support us to do the archaeological research and the work. But we provide scholarships for African Americans to okay. come specifically on these programs programs because of the history of slavery, the history of a plantation. We want people to be able to connect with their ancestors and we don't want money to be a barrier to that. Okay. So we think that that's really important. So we invite everyone to come. We've had people come from as far away as Australia. Wow. Uh, <laughs> to come I was about to ask, is it, is it like international based? Like, yeah. Okay. So we've had folks um, mostly uh, Australia, Canada uh, and the UK wow. uh, for our international participants. Um, but literally from all over the country, I think um, our participants that have come on the most programs, uh, a gentleman was here a couple weeks ago and he came on his 29th program. Wow. And it was another brand new program. It was, we were doing documenting of historic standing structures. So okay. we were going around the property. We have almost 200 standing structures on the property wow. and we were documenting them digitally. So doing 3D scanning, we were also doing drawing maps and we were also interviewing people that had lived in those houses in the early 20th century and whose oh, grandparents man. had lived in those houses to get that full history from all the different angles. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Like I said, taking time, like I said, I know the food is ready and everybody working so hard as a team. So I definitely want to get back to the team <laughs> and uh, see this amazing food that we all prepared and stuff like that. So thank you, Mary, for thank taking you time. Though. All right. Happy to do it. All right, guys. So like I said, the food is done. And so we got the chicken. Um, over some rice, the greens. I think this is some type of broth or gravy type deal. It looks good, smells good. Um, I just want to make sure I take time out to thank the chef, Jerome. He did an excellent job. Um, this whole experience has just been amazing. All right, so enough talking, let's get busy. Oh, this is hidden. Oh, you thought about Oh, man. And I just learned that there's, let's see, get this book. Just learned about this book. So essentially, it's uh, the Carolina Rice Kitchen, the African Connection. It's like over 300 uh, recipes for rice. Had no idea. No idea. Oh yeah, this is it. I can only imagine like, like I said, you're preparing all this food because you know the enslaved people didn't get chance to just, oh, let me enjoy my cooking. So, yeah. This is definitely very flavorful. I'm happy with it. Man. And just looking around at all the um, participants, everybody looks fulfilled. You know, everybody pulled together, whether you was an expert or not, and came together and made these wonderful dishes. So shout out to everybody that participated in this. And remember, this is just day one. We've got plenty more meals coming.
definitely say seconds are in order. All right, guys, so I'm gonna just go ahead and finish off this food. And uh, we got clean up and stuff like that. We have been cleaning as we go, but obviously there's so much stuff we have to clean. Uh, we have to make sure the fire gets put out, stuff like that. So make sure you stay tuned. All right, guys, so we have Mr. Jerome Bias here, and he's the world-renowned chef. <laughs> and <laughs> so first I want to say thank you for, you know, coming out here and sharing all these experiences with us because you definitely opened my eyes as, as we, we've been talking all last night and to today. So first I want to say thank you. And You're so uh, pretty much the first thing I want to ask you is what made you want to be a part of this project? In many ways, it's this picture here. It's a picture of a, it's a, it's a assemblage of brick stones, little bricks found here in the South Yard where they were de defining, doing the archaeology and coming up with where the enslaved population lived, who were, what, what did they have in their, in their spaces, how did they live, and they assembled it to create this beautiful picture of this little boy. I grew up, like most Americans, not knowing what to do with my enslaved ancestors. In my case, it was my great-grandparents. My grandfather was born in 1886. Most of us have been told that they were slaves and they were victims and don't know what to do with them. Shame is common. And I see this picture and I go, that's just a little boy who wants to live and is worthy of being loved. And my ancestors are worthy of being loved. And so I come here to cook the food that they cook create the experience of what it was like for them to cook and work and live in these spaces. Just show them having community. What does community look like? To make, I, I want, I'm trying to create a memorialization of them. To, uh, and to bring to the world to say, we're here. We're alive. We lived, we loved, we had hope. And it shows up in our food. And it shows up in, as we worked in, as communities. And that's what we wanted to create today. So I can definitely uh, concur with you, everything that you just said. Um, I do believe that food do bring people together. It just, I mean, I don't care where you're from in the world, food is like a universal language. Um, so some of the foods that we prepared, this one, even just for today, uh, were there's like, which one is your favorite to prepare? Mmm. I like the mixed greens. And I, I, I say I mix, the mixed greens because, you know, our enslaved ancestors didn't die. It would have been very easy for them to, adopt, to have died. And in South America and Central America, this, the lifespan was like seven years. That wasn't the case here. And what they did was they came here and they said, okay, we don't want to die. We, let's, and they were given, create the situation where they could take all the green stuff they could grow. Every leaf in the world and to cook it the way they did in, in South in Africa, in West Africa. And that's the way we did, so, so I wanted to celebrate that and sh today, and we could, I did do the greens. Oh yeah, them greens were definitely number one in my book, uh, right along with the- uh, um, Crackling bread. Oh yeah, crackling bread. Oh, that stuff yeah. was good. <laughs> that crackling bread was delicious. That, it, it was so simple too. Yeah. I definitely, I really don't think any of the recipes were terribly uh, complicated. Nope. Um, very simple, effective, delicious, very fl uh, uh, flavorful. Um, yeah, you got an A in my book for today, and I can't wait until tomorrow. But coming on this program, what do you want participants to take away from this? I want my folks, I want y'all to come away from here looking at the enslaved population as people. That we got mamas and daddies caring about their chilling. And that this is a plantation where people live for five generations. So you got cousins and aunts living here as tradespeople. People who have skills and talents. People who are creating families. People had hope that this was somebody's home. And that's what I want y'all to walk away from here with. Okay. So my last question for day one is, is there anything that you would want to see for next year that you would like want to incorporate? Ah, ooh, that's a good one. Then I you would have answer. You have answer? I got. Because if you it, don't, it, you it, got I, more days. What, what, I, what I want best? I want to do this with the descendants of 
the Montpelier descendant community. I want the descendants themselves to come in this space and cook the food of their ancestors in the spaces they were doing it. And to show that that community and have that community come together and for them to get a better sense of who their people are, who their people were, and who they are. Hmm. Yeah, that's powerful. Because just like I said, there's a lot to see on these grounds. Uh, I know we're going. I'm be trying to touch on it throughout the, uh, these three and a half days. But to like day one, I think it's off to a good start. Uh, well, actually, a great start. I think everybody came together. How, how do you think the people? Uh, came together. It was really cool to watch where each of us kind of reassess each other and we looked to say, okay, you got this skill set, but you ain't got this one. And you got this skill, but he ain't got that. And they, they were kind of covering for each other and working together. And I've watched where a couple times someone got overheated and they said it, 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 they went and took care of themselves and or someone helped them take care of them take care of them i like seeing us come together as a community and that's what i really appreciate but with the crowd we've got here today yeah um definitely the crowd is all ages i mean i'm not sure the youngest or the oldest but we can say safely 18 to 70 is a couple of a couple 76 76 yes all right there you go so it definitely encompasses all almost, almost to 80 so, um, like I said, this is day one, and every day I'm gonna try to just, you know, at the um, at the end, just try to, you know, get your pulse of the situation, see how the day went for you, what what we could have did better, maybe something like that. Just pretty much like a little recap. And like I said, I, I appreciate everything that you're doing for the culture, uh, for my period, for like inviting everyone, because uh, like like I said, this is the first one. Um, with Mary was saying, this is the first inaugural. Guess, no one else in the country has ever done anything like this. Yeah, that's one. Important takeaway is also like my period is leading the charge on that, um, telling the stories from, from the point of view of the enslaved. So that's very, very actually absolutely important. So is there anything that you want to say before we close our day one? I'm very glad you're here, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be jumba, pork jambalaya and filled pea soup for oh. lunch. Yeah, I can't wait. And more dessert. <laughs> We cannot forget the dessert. Okay, <laughs> okay. So we go, tomorrow's dessert is an apple brandy cornmeal pound cake. Yes. People are all excited about that. Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> I appreciate it. All I right. appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. So this is day one wrap up. I definitely enjoyed myself, um, you know, just um, doing stuff with other group members learning from them, all our strengths, our weaknesses, so having those hard conversations throughout the day. Um, they still actually building on the uh, pit over there. Uh, I guess that's gonna take maybe until tomorrow, something like that. Wait for that pig, all right? So we're prepping for tomorrow, getting some stuff. So make sure that you tune in next Monday uh, for day two of this um, historic uh, cooking. All right, Travis of Preston, peace. <laughs>